Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and in today's video we're going to compare two different attachments that you can use to mow with your tractor. I find these types of comparison videos to be some of the most helpful content to help people who are looking at buying a mower decide on, you know, what's the best use of their money. And I've actually got a lot of different ways to mow, from a commercial zero turn, to three mowing attachments for the tractor, and two mowing attachments for the skid loader. And I'm going to do a whole series of videos throughout this summer comparing different ways to mow different types of materials. Now, today's video was sparked because yesterday I went and visited a customer who has six acres that he wants me to mow. And we talked for about 20 minutes about the best way to mow it, and we couldn't come up with an answer. Because he's being a little bit particular about how he wants it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just trying to figure out the best option. So he's got six acres that he doesn't live on. He does not ever want it to be overgrown to the point it needs a bush hog. But he also doesn't want it kept mowed short like his yard. And I said, I've got a zero turn. And I can... The most cost effective thing is I can bring my commercial zero turn out there and mow that cheaper and it'll mow up to five inches I think. And he was a little concerned that he wanted it to grow too tall for a zero turn to practically mow with and he also has some areas like under trees where he wanted this kind of scrub brush cut back and stuff like that and I said well I can bring the tractor out and I've got a flail mower that'll leave a really clean cut. But he was asking me Will a flail mower, with the design of it, can you cut the grass and leave it tall? And I think so. But the flail mower is kind of a new attachment for me. And I just used it for field mowing, and we wanted it cut short. So I didn't try to mow it up high. So we're going to find out today. We're going to answer that question. Do you have to set that flail mower down at the ground, or can you hold it up in the air and mow then the other option was a traditional rotary cutter, brush hog, brush cutter, whatever you like to call it. And he was concerned that that wouldn't leave a clean cut, that it looks like a, a field. He wants it to look like an overgrown yard is the only way I can say it. So today we're going to do a little comparison. First thing I need to do is get the mid-mount mower put on the tractor. And actually, I'll just put the flail mower on too. So... We'll get that done, and then we'll go out and we'll do a little comparison. First consideration is storage, and how difficult is it to take it on and off of the tractor? Me personally, I try to keep as many of my attachments as I can under a roof. This sat out in my yard for the first six months I had it, I think, and then I had to mow around it and weed eat around my mower deck. I didn't like that. So I got it in here on a shelf. A little bit of a hassle getting it up and down from there. I usually use lifting straps, but off the top of my head, I didn't know where they were, but I knew where these chains were. So we're going to try that. Now, I think the ideal person who's going to want this deck is someone who mows on a regular basis with it so they're leaving it on there there's no practical way i could ever just leave my mower deck on the tractor all the time to mow with it i'm doing too much stuff that would tear the mower deck up so for me this conversation has to factor in taking it on and off every time i want to use it I would describe this as an ingenious design by John Deere because when you drive over it, it automatically connects the PTO shaft from the tractor to the mower deck 
without you touching anything. It's a fantastic design, but some people have had problems with durability on this system. So we'll talk about that at the end when we get into cost and you know which one I would spend my money on. I've actually only done this a handful of times and most of the time it goes right in there and it's like amazing that it works but every once in a while you have to fight with it. Let's take a look at it this time. Okay so the PTO shaft is right here. It has slid onto this gearbox on the mower just on its own. It's pretty cool. Now the next thing is we've got these pins right here that flip out of the way that let the mower deck get pulled all the way up and that one flipped around like it's supposed to um, I think I need to pull forward a little bit more we've got this little green bar right here that has to go all the way up into this bracket aside from the PTO being guided in automatically you got this bar right here that when I pull forward this picks up the mower deck And that's all there is to it. We were ready to cut. You also, you've got some gauge wheels that I sometimes forget. You're supposed to move those gauge wheels up and down. I think they go all the way up when you're loading the deck and you move them down to kind of keep it from scalping. But I would say you can give credit where credit's due without saying something's perfect. And from an engineering perspective, this is impressive that there's no manually moving the deck, fighting with the PTO shaft. I didn't even get my hands dirty. It was quick and easy. The tiller and box blade are actually kind of a tight fit in this little spot here. And I'd really like to get my flail mower moved in here. You're about to see that I haven't used it yet this spring, and if I don't get out there and weed eat around it, I wouldn't be able to find it. The flail mower is one of the few attachments I have that's not quick hitch compatible. The top hitch on it is about, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches taller than this. First try, well, one side on the first try. Second try. The top link won't quite reach, and I'm thinking if I pull those kickstands and let the three-point down, it might roll down and the top will come forward and it'll reach. I haven't seen anything that tells me I have to shut the tractor off to engage the PTO. But I've heard of another brand and another model that had an electrical issue on an electric PTO and it would occasionally just engage itself. So I shut it off every time. First run will be with the mid-mount mower. 
So when I originally thought about doing this test, I was planning to measure off an area that's, you know, 100 foot by the length of this field and then time it. But I don't really think that's relevant because both machines are going to run as fast as the tractor drives and how much time it takes to do a certain area will be dependent on the width of the mower deck. So if I had gotten the 72 inch instead of the 60 inch, it would mow faster. So I don't think that's really relevant. What I want to focus on is cut quality at different heights. Does it bog the machine down? And just ease of use and anything else that pops into my mind. Now when I compare mowing with the, the tractor mower deck to mowing with the zero turn, that will be timed. Okay, so I mowed there at three different heights with the mid-mount mower. Now I'm going to mow the same amount of strips with the flail mower. And then we'll get into the differences in cut quality, the things I like better about the mid-mount mower, and the things I like better about the flail mower. So honestly, this mid-mount mower and this flail mower cost pretty close to the same amount of money. Close enough that it shouldn't be the difference in this comparison. I think you're looking at around $4,000 for either of the units I have. Now those prices may be outdated or whatever, but it's close enough to compare. Now first, I want to look at which is better for mowing a field like this or like what my customer's talking about. So let's take a look at cut quality here. So when you look at this, this is the first pass I made. This was at max height, which is like five, maybe might be six inches actually. With that command cut deck, it's an actuator system and it's gonna cut exactly how tall you tell it to. And it's a really nice consistent cut. You're talking about the same basic mower deck, 
used on a John Deere commercial mower, but it's being run by a 38 horsepower diesel engine. It's not going to have trouble cutting thick grass, as you can see. And this is actually a beautiful cut, really. It's consistent. Now the first negative you see is right here. And what we have is windrows of grass. So if you're cutting tall stuff like this, unless you've got a bagger, which those baggers for something like this are high dollar, unless you've got something like that, you're going to have these windrows like this. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. Everybody's property and everybody's use is different, but it's a factor. I believe I had it set on three and a half inches here. Nice clean cut again. Definitely would be happy with that cut. Uh, here I tried to go two inches, but I think my command cut dropped all the way down. And I, I find the adjustment on that height to be really finicky to get it where you want. Sometimes mine, when I try to go down, it'll go all the way down if I don't notice it. And I have to bring it up. And when I bring it back up, it stops where it's supposed to. But I had it all the way down here. You can see we were scalping. That's actually a little mistake on my part. I mentioned those scalping wheels earlier and I didn't put them down. But... Then I raised it back up and we have a really nice two inch cut up here that I'd say most of you would be happy with on your yard. Now this is what was cut with the flail mower and this is how I normally run the flail mower. We're cutting this short, an inch, two inch maybe. Now this is definitely cut shorter than the two inch. This is cut at one inch, and we're cutting material that's like a foot tall, same as over there. It's all, it was all tall, a foot tall. We're cutting from 12 inches down to an inch, and we don't have any windrows anywhere on this. So that's a win for the flail mower. You are not left with any windrows. It's like a mulching mower. And because of that, on really thick stuff, it actually bogs down a little bit. But if you look, it's mulched or your windrow is dispersed evenly throughout your width of the row. To me, like I said a second ago, it's a big win the way it spreads materials. If you're going to be mowing fields, this is gonna give you the cleanest look on your field, which is what my current customer wants. Now the next question is, how does it do when you try to cut high with it? This is cut to about the same height as that six inch over there with the with the mower deck i would say this is cut maybe five inches and looks pretty good still no windrows still seems better but it's a little bit irregular because as the tractor moves the three-point bounces now on this stuff the way i normally run it there's a big roller on the back and that roller is setting on the ground and it's stabilizing it. And you've got kind of an articulating top link. So as, a, as it dips and moves or the tractor bounces, it stabilizes your cut. Now on this, it's when you bounce, your cut bounces. But still, this is not bad at all for what that customer is looking at for. Now personally, I don't like running it that way because all of your weight is on your three point instead of having, I mean, that's a heavy mower. That mower weighs like 800 pounds or something. That's a lot of weight to be bouncing around on your three point the whole time you're mowing, as opposed to letting that roller sit on the ground. So there is my answer in terms of what if you're mowing a field. Now let's talk about what if you're mowing a yard. One more comment about field use for this is the mower deck is a mower deck. This can also be a replacement for a brush hog and you can cut inch and a half, maybe two inch material with it. And that's a big difference in terms of versatility. So I think after comparing all types of mowers and if I was looking at it and saying I could only have one mower to do everything I want to do, I'd be tempted to say the flail mower is the king of mowers. But are each other thing may be better for what it's better for that purpose-built machines are better for certain purposes, but this is the most versatile. Now, if you're talking about you bought this machine because you like to be able to move stuff around a little bit, but primarily it's replacing your lawnmower, I can see where it would be tempting to get the mid-mount mower deck. You've got an exact cut height. It feels like a lawnmower a little bit when you're driving it. 
Overall, I think this machine is a little too big personally to mow your yard with. Now for me, I have it loaded down with weight. With that mower on it and with this deck and the backhoe subframe and the cab and the wheel weights and the loaded tires and the loader, we're talking about close to 6,000 pounds here. But let's say you're the guy who bought your tractor with a list of uses, but half of your hours are going to be mowing your own yard. I can definitely see where it would be tempting to get the mid-mount mower because then you can take your three-point attachments off, not have any wheel weights, not have fluid in the tires, take your loader off, you don't have a cab, you're minimizing the size of the machine down to the 2,500 pounds list weight, it's shorter, and you get a command cut. I can see that argument. But for me personally, if I could only have one of these or the other, I would still rather have the flail mower, even if I didn't have a, you know, a zero turn mower. It's a tough call if you're mowing your yard with it, but I'm not that picky about my yard, and this lets you get into corners better than this. This mower does not corner that well, and it requires a lot of weed eating. Now, ultimately, if you're only concerned about mowing your yard, I think the best option is a three-point finish mower, but I don't have one, so I couldn't actively compare that but i think that is made for exactly that and it's the best thing for it now if there's one reason i wouldn't recommend mowing with this mower it's because a lot of people have had issues with that actuator failing when my tractor was delivered the actuator was bad the first time i tried to use it they replaced it and then they replaced it a year later and it's been working ever since but I don't use it much and it's already it's failed twice under warranty so I think unless John Deere fixes this and maybe it was a one-year thing or whatever but there was a bit of an issue with this actuator outside of that mid-mount mowers I think are overrated I would if there was one thing I bought with my tractor that I wouldn't get again it's the mid-mount mower so I hope you come back whenever I do a comparison between the flail mower and a brush cutter and between this mower deck and a zero turn mower and when I compare a tractor brush cutter to a skid loader brush cutter I think it should be an interesting series but for now I appreciate you taking time to watch this video I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time